Queen Ush the Gurmila Mahagat Essen, IIEA, Aaron Kura, then Shalev, Essen Okoid Untuk, um, Bienvenue and Notre Commissioner, Moscovici, ici à Dublin, aujourd'hui, aujourd j'espère que vous trouverez votre visite uh, productive. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here, particularly to welcome so many of our ambassadors uh, from around the European Union to Ireland who are extremely engaged. Uh, and do a fantastic job for their respective um, countries. And to the IIEA and the European Commission's office, to Barbara and everybody for hosting uh, this very important uh, uh, event. And it is a, a, a very good opportunity for us all to, to take stock uh, of where we are um, uh, as part of the European uh, semester process. There are, of course, challenges, but equally opportunities for, for all of us, whether Irish are within our European uh, family. Um, can I begin, I suppose, by identifying some of the, the key features? The government has, since 2011, uh, identified a path for the country, and there is now clear evidence uh, that this recovery is both firmly on course and indeed well underway. Um, following the very severe contraction of economic activity, and employment, uh, our economy has gladly been uh, expanding since the middle of 2012. Uh, and GDP growth um, is and was, the last year, the strongest in the European Union. Uh, the 4% that we are predicting for 2015 um, should repeat the performance of the last two years, as well uh, as we are now seeing an overall um, um, increase in economic uh, activity um, and getting back in many indicators to either to the pre-crisis uh, levels. So 2015 should also be the second year in which we see a, a positive contribution from domestic demand. Domestic demand perhaps being uh, one of the final pieces of our economy uh, to, 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 to recover. Um, Department of Finance expects to see continued steady GDP GDP growth, uh, averaging at around three to three and a quarter percent per annum to the end uh, of this decade. Uh, and last week's CSO figures from the QNS, QNHS, the Quarterly National Household Survey, um, which cover the first three months of 2015, suggest that the recover recovery we are seeing in the labour market uh, is also now quite strong uh, and bedded down. Um, and really, for all of us, uh, and certainly for the government, since uh, coming into to, to office, uh, the employment barometer has always been the most important. Uh, and it is the most uh, practical indicator for our households uh, and for our citizens. The people uh, in our country at work has increased by 41,000, uh, or up by about 2.2%. Uh, and it has been broadly uh, across most sectors. Um, uh, the unemployment rate, gladly, is also now uh, back in, in single figures. And um, we have had 10 uh, consecutive quarters of solid employment growth, uh, with meaning, of course, that the target of 100,000 uh, net additional jobs uh, that was targeted to be achieved by the end of 2016 uh, has already uh, been achieved. Um, the recovery in the public finances is also firmly on track, uh, and the double-digit exchequer deficit that we inherited uh, will be well below the 3% excessive uh, deficit procedure ceiling uh, this year. And we are for forecasting now a general government balance of minus 2.3% in 2015 and minus 1.7% in 2016. So I hope that the Commissioner is noting all these uh, figures down there. I see him with his pen. Um, with tax revenues growing and crisis-related spending pressures also easing, uh, we do now expect the public finances to record a primary surplus this year, uh, with the remaining gap reflecting uh, debt servicing costs rather than the, the structural uh, imbalance between taxes and spending, which for so many years was, of course, the case. Uh, we have, uh, fortunately, overperformed on definite deficit reduction uh, in every year uh, to date, and we expect to see uh, the deficit completely eliminate, eliminated by at the latest 2019, uh, and possibly and hopefully uh, sooner than that. 
uh, our debt to GDP ratio is also uh, on a firmly downward trajectory. Uh, gross public debt, as you will all be aware, peaked at 123% in 2013. We expect that to be 105% this year um, and back to 100% uh, or even by the end of 2016, you'll be aware that net debt or national debt uh, is signific significantly lower uh, at approximately 85%, um, but it's the, it's, the, it's the general government deficit figures, of course, that, that the Commission uses. So coming to the European semester, um, this, broadly speaking, is, is, is a very positive uh, backdrop to our participation uh, in the European semester uh, process. And as you will all be aware, um, the European semester essentially brings together uh, the different strands of the European Union um, in a much stronger post-crisis uh, econ economic governance uh, arrangements. Uh, and states are coordinating their economic policies and efforts to support uh, growth and jobs. And we agree uh, that shared, we agreed uh, shared priorities at E-level in, in the first half of every year now, uh, and then we implement them at national level uh, in the second half of the year, which of course includes our own uh, budget and uh, our own budgetary uh, cycle. So the European semester, as you will be aware, is essentially designed uh, as a mutual sur surveillance process uh, that is supported by the European Commission. The key lesson of the recent crisis period is that all member states need to recognize the significance and importance uh, of these arrangements, particularly insofar as the stability of our single currency uh, is concerned. Uh, and with a period of prolonged weakness in the wider euro area, probably representing the key risk to our own economic uh, outlook, we all stand to benefit significantly from a well-functioning European semester process that guides our collective policies in the right direction and that also supports the right mix uh, of monetary, fiscal and also, crucially, structural uh, policies. This year's process is being advanced um, on the basis of three main pillars. Uh, boosting investment, uh, pressing ahead with key national and EU level structural reforms uh, and continued growth-friendly uh, fiscal consolidation. And I'm sure that uh, Commissioner Moscovici will touch on, uh, on those elements in his remarks uh, in a minute. But it is probably helpful to note that the 2015, uh, the 2015 is actually the first year since the onset of the crisis uh, in which all EU member states will actually be ex uh, experiencing positive economic growth. So that adds, I suppose, to the broadly uh, positive backdrop uh, that we have here in Ireland, but also across uh, the European Union. Economic sentiment is improving. Retail sales are up, and private sector lending has finally turned positive again. Uh, there is, of course, uh, other elements, such as lower oil prices, the ECB's quantitative uh, easing, uh, and not to mention uh, the Juncker package of uh, 315 uh, billion, which are all feeding in to a much greater positivity uh, and, and addition to growth uh, within in, in our country. On the 2015 country-specific recommendations, um, the Commission included four proposed CSRs uh, for Ireland in the semester package it produced uh, about a month ago now in the middle of May. Uh, and these cover, firstly, uh, restoring balance to the public finances, uh, including through the measures that were, will be reflected, of course, in the budget. Secondly, further improving the cost effectiveness of our healthcare spending uh, in line with the Future Health uh, Reform Program, which was adopted in 2012. Uh, the third one is uh, continuing to improve the arrangements we have developed for uh, uh, addressing the risks of intergenerational transmission of poverty, poverty uh, through what are described as low-intensity um, low households, um, while also strengthening, uh, importantly, healthcare provision. Uh, and finally, completing the work underway to deal with the very difficult post-crisis legacy of non-performing loans in the financial uh, sector. Um, these CSRs have, of course, essentially been a continuation uh, of, of last year's and, and building from the comprehensive uh, country report uh, already produced by the Commission at the end of February. Um, 
and it has to be, it has to be said, it is, it is cons uh, consistent uh, with, the, with the no surprises uh, principle. Uh, government politicians are particularly keen on the no surprises uh, principle. Um, they therefore align well with policy directions that are already firmly established at national level and I think that uh, for us is the key point that the CSRs uh, that we have uh, are completely in line with what we have uh, identified for ourselves uh, as the objective for this, for this country. Um, in terms of what happens next, the proposed CSRs will now be settled within the Council over the next coming weeks. Uh, the meeting of the Employment and Social Affairs Minister on the 18th, 18th of June will approve um, final CSRs on Member States' employment and social policies. Um, the Finance Ministers will meet on the 19th of June um, to approve the CSRs on Member States' stability programmes. And then the General Affairs Council, which I'm a member of, uh, will improve integrated CSRs for endorsement uh, in advance uh, and then be endorsed by the European Council uh, two days later on the 25th and 26th of June. So one of the most important lessons uh, from the European semester process as it has evolved in recent years is the need for us all to become a more open uh, and inclusive process, uh, including through more meaningful engagement by national parliaments uh, and other key stakeholders. Uh, we continue to aim for improving that balance, both at national and EU level, um, to allow for stronger economic governance arrangements on the one hand, uh, and stronger democratic participation uh, on the other. And this is why the government has produced um, its new spring economic statement at the end of April, setting out a clear fr framework with which, within which all stakeholders can contribute to the political dialogue that will inform the further decisions that will be taken in October's budget, um, including, of course, having regard for the CSRs that will be uh, endorsed and agreed at the June European Council. Uh, and that is why I see uh, the discussion that we uh, are having here today uh, as, ex uh, as exceptionally important. Uh, the interrelated goals that we all share in the European Union of supporting growth, economic uh, strengthening investment and expanding employment uh, while continuing to improve public uh, services um, is of course vital uh, for all of us. So it is crucial that our political choices in Ireland and elsewhere in Europe are informed by an open and inclusive dialogue uh, that is shaped by the best uh, available uh, evidence. And thankfully, we have reached a point uh, where the re restoration of a positive traje trajectory for underlying economic activity can hopefully bring a more medium-term orientation to our perspectives uh, and discussions. So to, 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 to finish up, uh, I think while there has been uh, you know, some commentary um, about you know, the spring economic statement uh, about the country-specific recommendations, uh, about the, um, about the uh, sorry, the, the, the CSRs, uh, and indeed about general uh, changes that have uh, come to bear in the budgetary process. Even the event today and uh, the, the program events that uh, Commissioner Moscovici has today by attending uh, at our Oireachtas Committee for Finance, meeting our Minister for Finance, and indeed being here with so many um, of our, our um, uh, ambassadorial um, representatives, members of our media and academics, I think is very positive because it does allow for a far greater degree of de debate uh, and consultation uh, and long may it continue. And so to thank uh, IIEA for hosting this event uh, and to all of you to thank you also uh, for listening to me so patiently uh, as I repeated in many uh, instances figures and statistics which you will already have heard, uh, but I think it's important we let the, the Commissioner know that while he visits 27 other member states, uh, he may find today a little bit easier uh, than he will in some of his other, uh, in his other visits, and we wish him the very best in the vital role that he is doing on behalf of all of us in the European Union uh, as Commissioner in such an important portfolio. So,